This is a Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and today we're at the 2015 NAM show with legendary Sam Hain, Danzig, drummer, and bassist Steve Zing. You've been working hard, man, with Danzig and Sam Hain. Yeah, it was great. We had a great year. Uh, Danzig, you know, it was kind of like our our downtime year. So basically, what we did, we we did just a handful of shows, uh, a few with Metallica, one with Molly Crew. Um, we did uh, Not Fest and uh, one in Austin for Phil Anselmo. So and then we did a you know a bunch of Sam Hain shows for our 30th anniversary. So it was great. So tell me about the Phil Anselmo show. So yeah, so um, uh, Phil Anselmo puts on this uh, house court thing in uh, in Austin, which you know all this um, yeah, horror movies and stuff like that, and it was great. Um, we actually we did a, a, duo, a duo thing with Danzig and Sam Hain, and it was it was just great. It was really great. What do you love about working with Glenn Danzig? You know, we're, I've known Glenn since I was a little kid. Wow. So uh, I met Glenn. I think I was 12 years old. And I stepped into uh, the garage where he was rehearsing with the um, basically the original uh, incarnation of the Misfits, and it was uh, it, it, that moment changed my life. And I knew that I was going to do that, and I knew I was going to be in a band with him. So it, it was it, I, with Glenn. What you get is the real thing. He doesn't go to the left or the right. You get the real thing. There's no bullshit. It is what it is. Do you feel like you get preferential treatment in those bands, Danzig and Sam Hain, because you grew up with Glenn? You know, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, you know, the good thing about Glenn, he he he, he treats us all good in the band. I, I mean, he, he's a, he's a he's a very fair guy. He's he's a great guy. He's very generous, actually. Um, and I think my relationship with him is a bit different because we've known each other for so long. So uh, you know, our relationship's a bit different, but uh, because we know more of each other and uh, you know, uh, family type stuff. But other than that. He's a great guy and um, uh, he's taught me a lot. Great mentor and you know I couldn't have, I couldn't be more blessed to be able to work with him. Is is the arrangement? Are you a hired gun? Yeah, everyone in in Danzig has always been a hired gun. Everyone. So, uh, but he treats us very well. He treats us very well. I have no complaints. So if, if you were to hurt yourself on the road, do you have an insurance plan? Absolutely. Glenn, Glenn's, got, Glenn's got everyone covered. Really? We're covered. We get taxes taken out of our checks. You know, every, every, everything is done. You know, it's a business. It's a business. That's great. Yeah. It's, it's like a real corporation. Absolutely. It, 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 you know, in, in I think most bands um, that are successful have have it set up to be uh, it's a real working business Steve at the, end, at the end of the day you know you're you're responsible for the people that work for you you're responsible for yourself and you know obviously you know you're there uh, for profitability because you know you have a business to run and it's got to be run like if it's not run like a business then you shouldn't be doing it do you get a little bit of that t-shirt money ha <laughs> uh, not on dancing but Sam Hain? Sure. Cool. And then, t what do you guys, what's in store for Danzig and Sam Hain right now? Well, basically, um, working on a new, new Danzig album. There's, Glenn's also doing, um, Danzig does Elvis, which I heard in the studio. So it's basically Glenn and a piano. And it's amazing. It, it's, 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 it's really bone chilling. Uh, new Danzig album. And then uh, come spring and summer, we'll be uh, back out on the road. So it's just going to be Glenn and a piano, and that's it. Yeah, I think there's a, a little bit of guitar in there, but uh, but basically it's Glenn and a piano, and it just absolutely, it's gorgeous. That's that that's that's the only way I could put it. It's absolutely gorgeous. How much do you want to bet this is going to be the highest selling Glenn Danzig record ever? You know, I wouldn't put it past because it, it's just. Glenn took really cool Elvis songs, and he he just added be, d doing what Glenn does best, and singing, and him playing piano. You know what? It's just unreal. I think I think it's gonna I think it's gonna do great.
Yeah, because that's his audience. He is totally catering to his audience with that album. You know, one, one of the best things about Glenn is like, if we're sitting backstage or on the bus or something, and you know, we're talking about music and songs, and he'll start he'll start singing a song from another band or whatever or an old song and it's just like you want to just sit there and, and let him go and just want to you want to hear him croon because Glenn's always been a crooner and that's what separated him from everyone else he's a crooner and it, it's it's chilling it's great what do you think of the legacy of the misfits um, uh, well to me the misfits ended in, in 1983 that's to me. There's been, you know, the current incarnation. There's been the, the, the one previous to that, um, and I respect what what Jerry only does. That's that's cool. Uh, but to me, I mean, I grew up on the original Misfits, and that's 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 my era of Misfits, and so um, I think that it, it'll continue forever. It's something, that you, you know. It'll go on and on and on because even if you look at the kids today that come to Danzig shows and if we do, uh, you know, a Misfits set, they're young kids. They were, I don't even think they're, I think their parents were just born when the, you know, when the Misfits broke up. So, you know, it goes to show you how it'll trickle down and keep going forever and ever. Well, the Misfits, uh, I mean, the legacy of Danzig and the Misfits is going to, is far surpassed probably in their wildest imaginations. The logo is legendary. The Danzig logo is legendary. You see them everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Glenn was very blessed to, <laughs> to be able to have those logos. Look, y y you know, it could have been anybody, it could have been any logo, but what w it's what was behind the logo. That's what it was. Obviously, you know, people, look, you can go you walk into a, a Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom's and buy a $70 shirt that says CBGB's or the Ramones. People may not know what CBGB's was or the Ramones, but they buy this t-shirt because they know it's cool. And I think that's kind of what happened with the Misfits logo and stuff, but it all started because of what was behind the logo. Yeah, well, you have to have great songs to have endurance. Look, you know what? You don't need the best musicianship. You know, you could look at the Beatles. The Beatles were not great musicians. They were not great singers. But you know their songs because they wrote great songs. They're timeless. I can, you know, probably sing along with every Beatles song there is. Uh, the song is a song, and Glenn wrote the songs. Tell me what it's like being a dad. Um, I have two daughters that are 19 and 17 and um, I, I don't think life prepares you for teenage daughters you know it, it's it's great because they're my girls but at the same time they drive me friggin crazy yeah I, I mean I've it, it's 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 a tired phrase but a lot of people say it's better to have boys than girls because you're always worrying about the girls where the boys it's like go out there and get dirty but that's exactly it I mean if anybody harms my girls I'll kill them <laughs> with a boy a boy will fight back but with girls you know they're close to my heart so I worry about them and, and what are they doing what are they gonna go what field are they going into what kind of degrees do, are they gonna get uh, my one daughter is uh, going into finance and the other one's going to be in culinary uh, how did they feel about you being a rock star you know I, I don't think they um, I don't think it really matters to them really? it really yeah you know I think my older daughter kind of gets it in some way my younger daughter she doesn't get it all at all. She, it, I, it, do, it, it doesn't phase her one bit. What about their friends? You know, some of their friends know, you know, the bands and they kind of know who I am. And it's, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. But to them, I'm just dad. I, I'm the guy that they come to for, you have $50, because it used to be five, then we graduated to 20. Now it's 50. Do you have $50? I'm like, for what? We're going to the movies. $50 to go to the movies? Well, then we're going to dinner. How about you stay home, watch a movie on Netflix, and make popcorn? I'll give you five bucks. But it doesn't work that way. But, but they're successful, and they're not screwing their lives up. 
No, you know what? My my girls are, are great girls, and um, you know I, I don't take any shit from them. And um, they might get away with it with their mother. I don't know, but um, I, I don't take any shit. And as long as they respect me, that's all I can ask for. What do you think about being in the genre of horror punk? I didn't. I, I didn't set out on that journey. It kind of. It kind of found me from the from the moment that I wanted to be in a band with Glenn. But I, I started a band, uh, you know, and with friends in high school to kind of emulate what the Misfits were doing because that was my thing. It was just like I wanted. I wanted to be that, and and so I went from that band right to Sam Hain. So, you know, it was a quick transition. It's just, you know, I was, I was always, I always loved horror movies and things like that and, you know, and the whole underground thing. And so it was just a natural. Tell me about the highlights of touring with Sam Hain in the early days. I don't know if there were highlights. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, back then we didn't have money. We didn't have tour buses. So basically we were in a van you know, a box truck that broke down constantly and we would get stuck. We got stuck one time in Texas for, I think, almost three days with no food, nothing. Um, you know, you no know, cell phones at the time or anything like that. So, you know, it's kind of like, they're all great memories. Would I want to relive them? Absolutely not. <laughs> what have been some of the highlights of the Sam Hain reunion? You know, when we were asked to do a 30th anniversary, first of all, uh, hard to believe, you know, as I told my daughter, I was her age when I recorded the album, and now think of yourself at 19 years old, now think of yourself at 50 years old, or 20 and 50, it's, it's kind of interesting that we had all these fans. And again, it was one of these things that, you know, uh, it, it, it just kind of like Danzig and the Misfits. You just you, there's there's a there's a legion of fans out there that are young kids, and and this is why without, without even product out there anymore. So now you have all these people and they're coming to the shows and and, and the fact that they said that we influence their lives, and to hear that really really strikes something because I didn't think I would ever make a mark. I didn't set out to make a mark in this world. I just, I just wanted to play music, and I got to play music with Glenn Danzig. Will there be a new Sam Hain record? I don't think so. London May. What's awesome about playing with him? He's London May. He's London May. You know, London is one of those guys that um, is a great musician, but more, um, more than anything, he's a great person. So, you know what, when you combine the two, and he's a great friend, I love him. What do you love about the NAMM show? Uh, you know what, NAMM's great. I mean, uh, it's not for all the wacky people that are here, but it, I, love, I love the products. Look, I'm a, I'm a tech geek. I love recording stuff, so I love to see what's new here. All right, well, Steve, we could spend all day talking to you, man, because you're the man. Thank you so much for taking time oh, out to you, talk man. to the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. You got it, Eric Blair. Fucking guy rules. Thanks. The Blaring Out show.